Good morning, everybody. On behalf of the conference organizing committee and as chair of the conference, it is my great pleasure to welcome all of you uh, to this conference on receptivity and responsibility. Our mainstream schools prepared for Hong Kong's ethnic minorities. It is a pleasure to be co-organizing this conference with Hong Kong Unison, um, the forerunner in advocating uh, equal access to education for ethnic minorities in Hong Kong. The conference has been made possible with the generous support of the Dean of the Faculty of Law, and we are most grateful to Professor Hall for his kind support uh, and generous uh, sponsorship of this um, event. The conference is also very timely, given that it comes just slightly past the first year mark uh, since the government has introduced um, the Chinese as a second language learning framework, and at a time, as we all know, when the government prepares for its third report on the Convention uh, for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. It is a good time for stock taking, reflection, and regrouping on the thoughts of the stakeholders uh, engaged in education um, to think about the law, the policy, and practice and the impact of pedagogy uh, on the lives of ethnic minority children and the role that it plays in the future that they can hope for in Hong Kong. As colleagues in this shared enterprise of education, it is our honor to have each and every one of you in the room with us today. We are joined today by principals, teachers, uh, curriculum designers, academics, uh, students, um, lawmakers, advocates, and members of the broader community. And it is really just this type of mix of a community uh, who sees the role and their own relevance in helping shape the future of Hong Kong uh, that will make a conference like this uh, hopefully uh, a successful uh, endeavor where we don't just stop talking after the event but continue the conversation outside these doors. The realization of the right to equal access to education, important as it is for all children, is of particular significance for ethnic minority children in Hong Kong. The reason I say this is that research studies around the world have connected the lack of equality of opportunity in education as a fundamental barrier to upward social mobility and is a key factor in poverty entrenchment as well as intergenerational poverty. In Hong Kong, the situation is no different, except that in, where in other countries, inequality may stem from racial or minority status discrimination. Given the nature and design of Hong Kong's education system, Language has become a proxy for race in Hong Kong. And it is for us to take note of that. As a group, Hong Kong's ethnic minorities must overcome this primary barrier to inclusion in society, which stands between them and the realization of a multitude of basic rights, including access to higher education, equal employment opportunities across various sectors, including the civil service, and equal access to a range of public services. Education has been recognized as a multiplier right in that sense. As the status of ethnic minorities report in Hong Kong, um, which presents a compilation and analysis of existing research on Hong Kong's ethnic minorities demonstrates, we now have evidence to confirm the significant correlation and critical link between education, ethnicity, and access to a range of rights and later life prospects, as is reflected in global trends on related research. Lower rates of ethnic minority attendance at school in early childhood and higher rates of dropout at secondary school among this group have led to significantly lower rates of ethnic minorities attending tertiary education. One of the salient reasons for this underrepresentation of ethnic minorities in education is the challenge of language. The lack of exposure to Chinese on a day-to-day -day basis due to family background limited social networks, or a segregated school system, and the lack of Chinese as a second language curriculum has contributed to the lower rates of Chinese proficiency among ethnic minority students. This has directly impacted future learning opportunities and resulted in higher rates of unemployment and impacted um, ethnic minorities in terms of lifelong poverty and their prospects. There are more households among ethnic minority families living in situations of poverty today. There are more ethnic minorities overrepresented in elementary populations, uh, elementary occupations in Hong Kong. Over 30% of Hong Kong's ethnic minority children under the age of 15 are living in poverty. So the proportion of Hong Kong's ethnic minority population in Hong Kong under the age of 35 uh, is larger than the general population uh, of Hong Kong under the age of 45. 
This also therefore suggests that they are an important talent pool for our future. For all the talk that Hong Kong um, engages in about our aging population, this therefore is a group whose talent cannot be uh, ignored and they cannot be left uh, to just go through the system as it is. That this is a matter that should be of concern to our society as a whole is without question. The challenge, however, um, lies in how one goes about addressing these issues in a systematic manner to achieve meaningful change and impact. Although the Hong Kong government bears the responsibility to ensure that the guarantee of equal access to education for all is realized, responsibility and the, opera the responsibility for the operationalization of equal access requires not only the political will to address systemic barriers, but also the resources and the partnership and collaboration of different actors who are invested in the education enterprise. Most crucially, therefore, today's conference offers a platform for a multi-stakeholder dialogue that we hope will be open and constructive to discuss this question of schools' receptivity and preparedness to receive ethnic minority students, particularly in the wake of the learning framework that has been introduced and after the disbanding of the former designated schools policy. We hope to exchange views with all of you about education and innovation uh, in pedagogy, curriculum design, as well as broader prospects or aspects of school design and population management, teacher training and research on creating inclusive learning environments that are supportive of diversity and responsive to the needs of all students. The discussion, we hope, will also center around the experiences of students and teachers around the government's introduction of the Chinese as a second language learning framework, the resources, merits, and challenges, and the implications that this policy change has brought. We hope the conference will serve to strengthen our communication and coordination as key actors and open up further channels to share information to strive closer to the goal of inclusive and ed equitable education uh, for Hong Kong's children. Before I hand over to Phyllis Chung, who's the executive chair of, um, executive director of Hong Kong Unison, I would like to say once again that I am immensely pleased to have all of you with us today, and I wish you a very productive day. Thank you.